These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Hello once again, and thanks for joining us for this Sunday's show. Up first, we've got on um, hazardous weather graphic. Uh, the greater Fairbanks area is under the influence of a wind advisory that's out for tonight until 4 a.m. Monday morning. That's for northeast winds 20 to 30 miles per hour with gusts to 45 miles per hour. Uh, keeping it on the chilly side there through tonight well, and into tomorrow as well. But lighter on the winds tomorrow. Otherwise, no other watches, warnings, or advisories are out <clears throat> around the state now. And going to satellite imagery, you can see a lot of clouds there over the eastern Gulf of Alaska with a band rotating into the panhandle. Uh, from oriented from southeast to northwest and uh, bringing some moisture up into the Copper River Basin and across the eastern interior areas. And also low pressure, hard to see on the chart here, but you can see it uh, rotating and pulling westward there south of the Kenai Peninsula. That bringing uh, moisture into uh, western Prince William Sound from the southern Kenai Peninsula on up into Turnigan Arm and over toward uh, the Alieska area. Otherwise, uh, variably cloudy skies with some sunshine over northern Cook Inlet into the Susitna Valley today. Maybe even a few breaks over the Copper River Basin, western Copper River Basin, but most of clearing occurring out over the uh, southern or out over the Alaska Peninsula and uh, eastern Aleutians starting out pretty nice, as you can see. Uh, some cirrus trying to push in, and that front out to the west weakening. That brought the 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts out to Shimmy and out to yesterday. Slowly moving eastward and weakening considerably. Winds uh, gusting maybe 35 to 40 miles an hour at ADAC, and rain pushing in toward Atka Island today, but uh, staying dry to the east and to the north with a lot of clear skies up over, as you can see, the northern Bering Sea, St. Lawrence Island, in across the northern interior areas. Few clouds along the Arctic coast, but nothing too terribly significant. Maybe a few flurries over on the east side around Kaktovik and Barter Island. Otherwise, areas of light snow again over along the Alaska Range and up over the eastern interior areas on down into portions of the Copper River Basin. Rain falling at Yakutat, they picked about a tenth of an inch of precipitation today, and then Huna about five hundredths of an inch. Uh, a little bit more down toward uh, Ketchikan and Heidelberg with about two or a quarter of an inch of rainfall there. Otherwise, up along the uh, <clears throat> North Gulf Coast, some areas of rain and snow with snow uh, as much as three to six inches fell at Whittier and in toward Portage today and portions of the northern Kenai Peninsula there along the Seward Highway seen uh, snow uh, several inches falling in the last 12 hours there. But uh, that cuts off over the Kenai Peninsula and mostly just uh, clouds along with some sun over the Cook Inlet area and then clear skies, Kodiak Island, uh, mostly clear and dry conditions for the eastern and northern Bering Sea with a lot of sunshine over the western part of the state up into the Kobuk Koyukuk Valley areas north of the Yukon River there in the upland area to the Brooks Range. And that front uh, weakening as it pushes rain into Adak and Atka, we'll see tonight. New low center forms uh, just to the north of the Aleutians, or actually west of the Pribilofs there. And uh, that'll slide some uh, moisture in the form of rain or snow into the eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs with rain and snow showers following in behind for the central and western Aleutians. And low pressure kind of uh, rotates back to the southeast there into the Gulf of Alaska. And easterly flow, that'll keep uh, moisture trying to push westward, but won't get too much farther. Look for some light snow to continue uh, for Turnigan Arm and from the Chugach Mountains eastward into mainly western Prince William Sound along the North Gulf Coast. Some rain and snow, light rain and snow over the northern pan with light rain continuing, becoming a little more showery for the southern southeast coast. And areas of light snow uh, still in the forecast with pretty gusty northeast winds. As I mentioned, that wind advisory continues for the Fairbanks area for a gust of 45 miles an hour through tonight. And gusty northeast winds 
through the passes of the Brooks Range as well, with that strong Arctic high sending up over the north coast and the low in the Gulf, giving enough gradient to support those winds over the central and eastern interior. And kind of a northwest breeze, maybe gusts 20 to 30 miles an hour for Kodiak Island, but dry conditions there. And uh, for tomorrow, Low pressure, weak low pressure slides into the Alaska Peninsula, bringing rain and snow with it there. And that'll become uh, showers for the eastern Aleutian, chance of uh, some light moisture for the Pergolof Islands, scattered isolated showers for the western and central Aleutians. But you can see the northern Bering Sea there, Arctic high pressure keeping that moisture to the south, uh, really trying to push up in toward Cape Newenham there, maybe the Cuscombe Bay area, but that's just a slight chance. Maybe just a few clouds there for the southwest interior. So it'll stay dry with light winds and partly the mostly sunny skies for Kodiak Island, as well as uh, areas from Cook Inlet westward. And northward there, uh, less wind, winds diminishing all areas, still gusty through the Brooks Range passes, but uh, not as gusty as they have been, but winds will stay light for the north slope in the Arctic coast on Monday and chance of showers over the Panhandle. Then the outlook for Tuesday, another system develops and starts to move uh, northeastward there, but staying well to the southwest of the Queen Charlottes, otherwise uh, high pressure will tend to cut the precipitation off over the panhandle, but there's still a chance of showers throughout the day with mostly cloudy skies there. Look for a chance of rain or snow or rain or snow showers for the North Gulf Coast into the Copper River Basin, chance of snow showers as well as the, along the Alaska Range. Uh, southeast flow will actually tend to increase the moisture clouds and start to raise the temperatures a little bit here over the southern Alaska areas with clouds on the increase even north of the Alaska range there but less of a snow shower chance for the upper Tanana Valley and 40 mile country and some moisture working northward there clouds should reach St. Lawrence Island or moisture working northward over the Bering Sea as a chance of snow showers uh, tries to push up to St. Matthew Island chance of rain or snow showers for the Pribla as well as the Aleutians, uh, looks pretty showery, but winds are quite light along the Aleutian chain. Low pressure in Bristol Bay will make for unsettled conditions there with cloudy skies, light winds, and chance of rain or snow for Kodiak Island. And looking at the low temperatures for tonight for the Panhandle, again, right around 40 degrees for the overnight lows, mid-30s for Yakutat. Otherwise, teens in the Susitna Valley, teens in the lower 20s for the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet area, a little milder toward Homer. 10 to 15 the Copper River Basin and uh, 5 to 10 for the lows in the Cuscombe Valley and 15 to 20 in Bristol Bay. Highs for tomorrow, uh, lower to mid 40s, South Central Alaska, mid 30s in the Copper River Basin, upper 20s and lower 30s for the Cuscombe Valley and Bristol Bay, lower 40s Kodiak Island and upper 40s for the Panhandle. Followed by lows, again, uh, upper 30s near 40 for the southeast coast, lower 20s in the Copper River Basin, upper 20s to near 30 for the uh, south central Alaska area, and west of the Alaska Range in the teens, 20s for Bristol Bay, lower 30s Kodiak Island, followed by highs in the uh, 40s for the southeast coast, lower 40s for the north Gulf Coast, mid 40s south central Alaska, and now, Copper Aviation River Basin, and Wilder now west of the Alaska Range. You can see temperatures pushing well above freezing, near 40 there, maybe about 38 for McGrath, lower 40s for Bristol Bay, 43 for Kodiak and Homer. And in the interior, lows uh, down 0 to 10 for the Tanana Valley, out to the Seward Peninsula and St. Lawrence Island, but well below zero, anywhere from 10 to 20 below for the Eastern Brooks Range and North Slope areas out to the Arctic Coast. Highs tomorrow pushing above zero, except maybe the North Slope seeing a little below zero, but the Arctic Coast anywhere from 5 to 10 in the 20s elsewhere. And then lows, uh, single numbers in the interior to near zero over the northern valleys. Brooks range 10 to 15 below, 5 below to 15 below for the Arctic coast. And for highs, uh, mid to upper 30s for the upper Tanana Valley area, staying below freezing everywhere else. And the southwest here, 30s for the lows tonight for the Aleutians, mid 30s for the highs for the Pribilofs, upper 30s, lower 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. And then the lows Tuesday morning, lower 20s for the Pribilofs, elsewhere in the 30s, colder along the southwest coast. Highs Tuesday afternoon, upper 20s for the southwest coast, 22 for Savunga, 28 for St. Paul, otherwise upper 30s and lower 40s. And now, 
Aviation Weather Around Alaska. Fly weather for Monday morning. Some marginal VFR, eastern Arctic coast, central and eastern north slope to the Brooks Range. And uh, some IFR over the uh, upper Tanah Valley there, down along and north of the eastern Alaska Range, with marginal VFR up to and north of Eagle. With the IFR eastern North Gulf Coast there from Cape St. Elias to Yakutat, covering all of the Panhandle. Another band of IFR with that uh, weakening front pushing in from Atka to Unmak Island, northward to about uh, the Pribilofs. VFR holds over the eastern Bering and right on up into the Chukchi and Arctic Oceans. And for the afternoon, we've got, there we go, VFR, interior Alaska, again from the Arctic Ocean southward, right in across uh, Val or the Susitna Valley, western Alaska range, down to Kodiak Island. As you can see, uh, Bristol Bay stays VFR, northern Bering Sea there, right up through the strait to the Chuck Sea. And uh, band of IFR now shifting up into the Pribilof Islands and pushing eastward now to the western Alaska Peninsula. And uh, some improvement to marginal conditions from Unamak Island westward to Shimianat 2. Otherwise, uh, look for some gradual improvement over the southeast coast, holding toward IFR in the forecast there over toward the border in Lynn Canal Glacier Bay. IFR, southeast interior, mostly the eastern Copper River Basin now and along the uh, coast range. And for Tuesday, IFR along and south of the Brooks, or along and south of the Alaska Range. And the Central Brooks Range seeing some IFR as well, otherwise uh, VFR either side of that zone. And then mostly marginal across southern Alaska, some scattered areas of VFR as well. Western Kenai Peninsula, western Iliamna Lake, uh, for example, and uh, IFR Kodiak Island, Alaska Peninsula, as well as uh, I'll oh, call it Kiska and Amchitka Islands out there in the west. And IFR becomes marginal to VFR along the central coast of the Panhandle. For the afternoon, marginal VFR with IFR on the north coast of the Panhandle. And the North Gulf Coast, IFR including all of Prince William Sound. IFR narrow band there, western Alaska range down to Kachemak Bay or Kamishak Bay, southern Kodiak Island, some uh, IFR. Northern Interior, all VFR from the Alaska Range right on up uh, to the Arctic Coast and a little beyond. And for passes, Anatuvik and Anatovikanatigan looking really good for Monday VFR on either entrance. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR flying for the Western Alaska Range. And even rainy VFR. Windy VFR with some moisture coming in from the southeast might go marginal tomorrow afternoon. And uh, Isabel, Marginal VFR the entire day, lowest conditions again in the afternoon, mostly on the southern entrance. And Mentasta will be IFR for Monday. And Tanita, call it marginal throughout the day for the day on Monday. And Portage, same thing, marginal VFR, either approach and for Chilkoot and White. Looks like IFR flying conditions there. For the freezing levels at the surface, uh, near the Pribilofs, down across the Alaska Peninsula, and up just south of the North Gulf Coast, 2,000 feet in over the Panhandle and the eastern Aleutians to Atka Island. Icing, areas of isolated moderate rime icing, 5 to 11,000 feet or so with that weakening front pushing eastward into the Alaska Peninsula covering the eastern Aleutians and pushing up toward the Pribilofs. And then some uh, isolated moderate rime or even mixed icing from the southeast interior there, eastern Copper River Basin down across all of the southeast coast. And moving on to the jet stream at 33,000 feet up to the northwest there and across the Chukchi Sea. Northeast winds 75 knots and then pretty light over the interior becoming westerly at about 100 knots there over the Alaska Peninsula. 115 knots into the Queen Charlotte Islands and the strongest jet there just south of the Aleutians at 150 knots out of the west. 9,000 feet, east winds 40 knots across the Seward Peninsula, Bering Strait, and even St. Lawrence Island, and south winds 40 knots across the southern and eastern southeast coast. And taking a look at 3,000 feet, east winds up to 50 knots there across the Noatak Valley to Kivalina, probably even Cape uh, Lisbon and Point Hope, maybe even Point Lay. Otherwise, uh, northwest 40 to 45 knots across the eastern Aleutians. 
Turbulence, considerable moderate turbulence surfaced to 5,000 feet up over the north and northwest interior, as well as the central Aleutians. Welcome back to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us once again is Eric Stevens, our good friend from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska, based up at UAF. And thanks for joining us, Eric. Really appreciate it. Oh, happy to be here, Dave. And we love to hear about all the fascinating developments, and new and old, and how the, we're using the tools here, especially around Alaska. And mm -hmm. I've got to think that, you know, satellite meteorology right now is a, a fascinating time to be involved in. If we go back to the first satellite, uh, Tyros back in 1960, I think is when we got some of those first pictures. Weather and meteorology probably changed that day for a whole lot of people, and it's mm -hmm. still changing today, right? Oh, you know it. Satellite imagery is so important, and it's getting better all the time. Yeah. Of course, never perfect, but especially for us in Alaska, where there are other data sets like radars mm -hmm. and weather balloons are so thinly spread, right. the satellite is the great equalizer because the satellite sees everything. Right. Yeah, right. we've got one particular um, issue in volcanic ash detection. That's a big deal here. Yeah. You know it. If you fly an airplane into volcanic ash, uh, your jet engine might just fail. And, right. and an airplane without engines is in a world of hurt. Sure. So if there's a volcano that goes off, satellite imagery is the way to track that plume of ash mm -hmm. and to tell pilots this is where you need to not be right. to avoid this ash plume. And uh, there's a, a phrase out there, what's the difference? What's you know, the what's difference? the difference? Okay. Well, it turns out, what we're gonna discuss today, that the difference is everything. There's a technique called channel differencing. Okay. That if you take one piece of the spectrum of what the satellite detects and a slightly different wavelength of that spectrum, even though those two images might look similar, magical things happen when you subtract one from the other huh. and they reveal information that was already there, but it was hard to find until you did that subtraction. That sounds like Nicolas Cage in National Treasure when he's got those fancy glasses <laughs> and he's flipping one up and back and forth. I mean, is this what we're talking about? Let, let, let's go more highbrow and talk okay. Michelangelo. Oh, so okay. apparently Michelangelo <laughs> made some amazing sculpture yeah. and someone said, Michael, that's amazing. How did you do it? Mm -hmm. And Michelangelo's reply allegedly was, well, you know, in that rock, the statue was already in there. Right. I just scraped away the unnecessary bits. In satellite meteorology, yeah. sometimes there are meteorological features that are in the data, but you can't see it until you combine or difference some of the channels. Okay. And we've got a case, good old uh, Pavlov volcano, right. goes off now and then. Sure. And uh, you can observe directly uh, a picture of the volcano. You know, just take it with your iPhone. Yeah. You can see a volcano we know going it is off. Yep. Right. But if you want to get the broad view, we need satellite mm -hmm. to do that. Now, there are a couple of wavelengths that we can look at. Wait. So, what's a wavelength? What that's, is a wavelength? The, yeah. that's the amount of space between a peak and a valley and another peak uh, in a certain part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to look at 12 micron wavelength wow. and 10.8 micron wavelength. What is a micron? So What's a micron? Yeah, we're getting into the geek department now. A micron <laughs> is a unit of length, and it is quite tiny. We're looking at what's called long wave uh, wavelengths, okay. but it takes 25,000 of these microns to make an inch. Yeah, a human Whoa. blood cell is about five microns across. So when we're talking about 12 micron imagery as allegedly long wave, well, that's relative. Pretty short for light. Yeah, yeah. it's other okay. part of the, uh, it's, it's just a, an expression for the the spectrum there. Okay. So we can look at a at a 12 micron image, say a satellite image at 12 microns. We're seeing a heat signature here, really. And and the way this color enhancement works is the the yellow and the red stuff is is high cold clouds down mm -hmm. here over the Gulf of Alaska into South Central. And if you were set, you were asked, where do you find the uh, volcanic ash plume in this image? Hey, where do you find the volcanic plume in this image? Eric? It's hard to do. I'm yeah. not sure I could find it. If you, <laughs> if you were to look at this image and just say, show me the, what you, what jumps out at you here, I'd say, well, n nothing really. Well, let's okay. look. So 12 micron doesn't help us. Let's okay. look at 10.8 microns. All right. All right. Look at that. It's practically the same image. So. Mm. Where's this volcanic ash? Can't find it at 12 microns, can't really see it at 10.8, at mm -hmm. but when we take, subtract one channel from the other, oh. magically, the huh. plume appears. The color enhancement here yeah. uh, highlights the ash in blue, 
Wow. The data, the information was already there, but we couldn't find it until we subtracted one channel from another. Very it's, interesting. It's almost magical. Similarly, let's say you're looking for fog up on the north slope. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a foggy neighborhood. Sure. Um, in 11 micron and 3.9 micron, we've got a 3.9 micron image here. Um, it's a big fuzzy blur over Barrow. We, mm -hmm. we can't see where the fog is. But the information is lurking in there waiting for us to, to reveal it. All we have to do is find that difference between the 11 micron and the 3.9 and then this image huh. becomes this image and the fog bank jumps right out and you can see it up there at Barrow. Now every, you gotta choose the right tool for the job. Sure. Like they say, you open your right. toolbox, all kinds of stuff in there, mm -hmm. what do we need for this particular task? If you wanna find volcanic ash, we look at 12 and 10.8 micron, find that difference. If you wanna okay. find fog, we'll look at 11 and 3.9 micron, find that difference. It's great, different tools for different jobs. Of course, there's always caveats and gotchas, but this <laughs> fog procedure, yeah. it only works at night, because when the sun oh. comes up, it, it gets in the way. Um, so every product has its strengths and limitations, and in meteorology, the challenge is using the right tool for the right job, and these are some of those tools. And discovery is still happening, even with meteorology. The weather's been around for a long time, but the yeah. tools that are being developed to understand the meteorology is a fascinating and still very new science. It's, a, it's such a young science. We've come so far. I'm getting old enough now that I can literally <laughs> say that you know when I was a boy, we didn't have this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and there's new things happening all the time. New satellites will be launched in coming years that will have better instruments than ever before. It's an exciting time, and this is so helpful for Alaska because satellites Mm -hmm. help fill in the gaps between other ways obser of uh, observing the weather. Satellite's the great equalizer for Alaska. Yeah, and help so many people stay safe in so many ways every you know day it. up here in the last frontier. Yeah, it's what it's all about, protecting lives and property. Well, thank you so much for joining us again, Eric. We love to hear about this fascinating information, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, it just makes me want to go watch satellite pictures all day. So <laughs> hopefully sure we're inspiring more people to do the same thing, and uh, just be curious. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather facts and we'll see you next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Okay, the uh, Ice Edge, today's analysis, and uh, comparing it to earlier in the week, it's been slowly moving southward, south of uh, the Cuscombe Delta Coast, Cuscombe Bay there, and a little to the southwest there, northeast of the Pribilofs, and that uh, progression will slow as the winds continue to diminish and become lighter out that way and a little more easterly and then back to the northwest but light wind conditions so don't look for a big change in the position of the sea ice here for the next several days otherwise uh, for tomorrow along the south coast south winds 20 knots seas 8 feet and east southeast winds at uh, 15 knots for the north coast Lynn Canal, south winds 15 knots, south winds 20 knots for Stevens Passage with higher gusts, and south winds at 20 knots for Clarence Strait and four foot seas expected. And for Tuesday on the south coast, south to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, seas 10 to 13 feet, and then Clarence Strait, small craft advisory, southeast winds increasing to 30 knots with seas building to 12 feet, and for the central and northern inner waters, southeast winds of 15 knots with three foot seas and for the north coast south to uh, southeast winds at 20 knots with seas around 10 feet prince william sound for monday north winds 15 knots seas two feet and for the northeastern north gulf coast northeast winds 20 to 30 knots western north gulf coast north at 20 and small craft advisories for Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands. Northwest winds 30 knots, seas around eight feet. Cook Inlet, northeast winds 15 knots. For Tuesday for Cook Inlet, northeast winds 15 to 20 knots. Prince William Sound, east winds at 20 knots, seas four feet. Small craft advisory for the eastern north Gulf Coast for east southeast winds at 25. Western north Gulf Coast, Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay, looking for east winds at 20 knots. For Kodiak Island, west northwesterlies at 25 knots for Monday. Otherwise, variable winds 10 to 25 knots for the Alaska Peninsula, Bristol Bay north at 15 knots. And for Tuesday, Alaska Peninsula, west northwest winds 20 to 30 knots with seas running 4 to 8 feet. Winds southwest at 20 knots for Bristol Bay and southwest winds at 20 knots for Kodiak Island. For the eastern Aleutians, 
West to south winds at 25 knots uh, for the day Monday. Adak and Atka, west winds 25 knots, and west southwest winds 15 to 20 knots for the western Aleutians. And out west there on Tuesday, looking at uh, west and northwest winds 20 to 25 knots, central Aleutians west at 20. And small craft advisories for the eastern Aleutians, west winds 25 to 30 knots with 6 to 9 foot seas. For the Cuscombe Delta Coast, north winds 15 knots for Monday and east 25 knots for the Pribilofs, northeast 25 for the uh, St. Matthew Island area, Yukon Delta Coast, St. Lawrence Island. But gale warnings for Norton Sound for northeast winds on Monday to 35 knots. And then those fall back to 25 knots still from the northeast there for Norton Sound on Tuesday. Northeast to 20 for St. Lawrence Island and uh, north to northeast winds 15 knots for the southwest coast. Light variable winds for the Pribilof Islands at 10 knots and for St. Matthew Island north winds 20 knots. <clears throat> for the eastern Boulevard Sea Coast Monday, <clears throat> excuse me, west winds at 10 knots, north winds 10 knots for the central coast. Western Arctic coast, northeast winds at 20 knots and 15 to 25 knot winds from Cape Beaufort to Wales. And on Tuesday, no change there from Wales to Cape Beaufort and 20 to 30 knot northeast winds for the Western Arctic coast, pretty light and variable for the central coast and west-southwest winds 10 to 20 knots for the east side. For tonight, <clears throat> strong high pressure continues to hold over the North Slope and Arctic coast, keeping uh, winds light, but uh, gusty winds continue through the paths of the Brooks Range and over the central and eastern interior. On down to the Copper River Basin, low pressure in the Gulf of Alaska and south to southwest flow into the Panhandle keeps it wet and unsettled there. Clear and cold out to the west, Kodiak Island and the western northern interior. Chance of snow moves into the Perbolofs tonight. Rain and snow for the eastern Solutions. And that continues uh, for the Pribilof Southeast Bering Sea as a low pressure area finally makes its way into the Alaska Peninsula tomorrow. Showers for the pan. It'll still a chance of snow over the eastern interior, but uh, clear and continued cold over the remainder of interior Alaska into the northern Bering Sea. And then finally a little warmer and cloudier and better chance of precipitation. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.